Zinedine Zidane was a coach that excelled in terms of man management. On floodlit nights in the Champions League, the former Real Madrid midfielder was the right personality to get the best out of a star-studded eleven, relying on individuals to prove their quality. Often, Zidane would use a 4-3-3 system with a recognisable front three, Gareth Bale, Karim Benzema and Cristiano Ronaldo. In his final campaign in charge, a 4-4-2 formation was also utilised, asking more from Ronaldo in a central striking role and calling on the likes of Isco, Lucas Vazquez and Marco Asensio to impress in wide areas. The summer of 2018 has been all change. Zidane stepped down after winning three consecutive Champions League trophies, while Cristiano Ronaldo upped sticks for Turin as he seeks a new challenge and fresh records to break with Juventus. Julen Lopetegui has perhaps stepped out of the frying pan and into the fire. After a dramatic end to his spell as Spain boss on the eve of the World Cup finals in Russia, the former Porto tactician has arrived in Madrid with a remit to make Los Blancos more competitive over the longer, more drawn-out format of La Liga. The title has stayed in Barcelona's grasp for too long. Lopetegui has used various different systems, 4-2-3-1, stroke 4-3-3, and in-game tweaks since taking over as Real Madrid boss, but several key points remain consistent as Los Blancos try to move away from relying on individuals and instead shoulder the responsibility to defend from the front and score goals as a collective. Although Marcelo and Dani Carvajal maintain some width from fullback, a vital tool in recent systems, there are some sizeable changes in approach already. The BBC era is over, with Benzema, Bale and Marco Asensio the new immediate triple threat for Lopetegui's Real Madrid in the final third. While Asensio starts on the left-hand side, Bale is deployed on the right and Benzema features centrally, there is a lot of license for free movement. Benzema is free to drop very deep to help link up play before offloading the ball and getting back up top to lead the line, while Bale and Asensio can read the flow of the game and pick their moments to switch flanks or drive in field on the ball. Isco is given free reign to support them creatively. While Bale's cross, which eventually led to Carvajal's opening goal in La Liga, arrived from the left flank against Getafe, his own finish to make it 2-0 came from the right, as did his assist for Benzema versus Atletico Madrid in the UEFA Super Cup. Versus Girona in league action, Asensio won two penalties, one on the left byline and the other arriving on the right-hand side of the opposition box. Lopetegui gives his intelligent front three the license to take their own decisions in terms of movement, so long as when they are asked to track back, they fill in the gaps defensively based on the positions of their fellow forwards. This fluidity forces the opposition to remain organised, switched on, and to communicate well. As you can see from their average position versus Girona, the front four have plenty of liberty to roam, with Benzema a key associative presence. The Frenchman combines with his midfield before getting into the box, and has already a working relationship with Bale from the right. Should there be a mistake in possession which allows the opponents to steal the ball, the idea is that Real Madrid immediately click into gear as a unit and hunt it back down as a group. This is yet to be implemented throughout a full game by Lopetegui, but when Real Madrid are playing their best football at a good intensity and tempo, it is accompanied by more energetic pressing and setting up camp in the opposition half. Even when they were 4-1 ahead against Girona, the visiting strike force and midfield would squeeze further and further up the pitch in an attempt to force mistakes from the opposing defence or long balls into areas where the likes of Sergio Ramos or Rafael Varane can prevail in the air. Lopetegui has kicked off his first La Liga campaign in charge with a double pivot in midfield, consisting of Tony Kroos and Casemiro, as well as a risky midfield three of Kroos, Isco and Dani Caballas. When Real Madrid find themselves on the back foot, their front four do work hard to get it back, but inevitably leave a huge amount of work for their defensive midfield too, especially if Marcelo joins the attack too. Isco is a player in whom Lopetegui places great trust, with Luka Modric introduced very slowly after his World Cup exploits. The Spaniard can sniff out the direction in which play is headed, connecting the dots between Bale and Asensio in the wider areas of the field by shuttling wide, boasting a good relationship with Asensio and the range of passing required to slip Bale in behind, or find the Welshman wide on the right with a well-weighted diagonal pass. Isco has total freedom to play his game as he sees it. Kroos has been the metronome at the base of the midfield, with the Germany international very much key in terms of maintaining control when Real Madrid have the ball, racking up a 96.3% pass completion rate against Girona and 98.3% versus Getafe on the opening day. There are still creases to be ironed out and balances to be struck, but Lopetegui has a clear tactical idea that his squad appear to have faith in. A more aggressive, reactive press, mixed with a fluid front three, will certainly make Real Madrid a far more unpredictable side in La Liga this season. Under Zidane, Los Blancos were guilty of becoming one-dimensional and relying on good service into the box from Marcelo and Carvajal out wide, but Lopetegui wants his side to have more freedom on the ball and a more varied approach play. 
Balancing stars might be tough, but the Spaniard can't be criticised for not being afraid to put his own stamp on a very successful Real Madrid squad.